Uh, of course, we don't record the prayers and prayer requests for your privacy. Uh, and uh, the, and that's a very good reason. And if somebody asks you, say, I tune in to the recording of prayer meeting. I don't see anybody having this. So all y'all do is a Bible study. You tell them that uh, most of the time it's spent in prayer and uh, we just don't record that part. If they want it, they got to come out and get it, uh, get it live or else uh, they're just going to miss for that week. So, of course, we're in the book Creeping Compromise, and we've been through three chapters, and now we're entering into chapter four, and I'm just going to say a prayer as we get into the topic for tonight. Uh, I'll say more on the other side of the prayer. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for all that has been lifted up to you tonight, Lord. I join with my brothers and sisters, uh, thanking you for your grace and your mercy. You give good gifts to your children, good and perfect gifts, such as good health and recovery and even a place to stay. Praise the Lord. Uh, you give us comfort and shelter, and we thank you for all of those things. Now, Lord, as we move to this phase of our time together, we pray for your wisdom and your discernment, that your spirit rests with us. We ask, Lord, that you lead and guide us. We know that you do everything decent and in order. And so, Lord, let this time be acceptable in your sight is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. All right. Tonight, chapter four uh, requires uh, a little bit of maturity. You know, we want to have a, a serious conversation, a God-led uh, conversation. Uh, we want to be respectful of one another, even those who may not be on this call. Um, you know, we want to be sensitive to the feelings of others, but not compromising the truth. Uh, we don't mind uh, anyone chiming in with a real question or a real comment, but we don't want people to be talking just to be talking. You know, we wanna add something to the conversation. Now, I knew I was gonna say that with the risk of folks just shutting down. Don't, don't shut down on me. Just be sincere about what we're doing uh, because this is one of the uh, biggest spiritual battles of our time and we're gonna find out why. And it's again, somebody keeps mentioning it. I'll bring it up tonight. Brother Cruz wrote this so long ago, uh, and I can only imagine what he would think of what it, what it is, what's going on today. So uh, you see the title, Unisex. This is chapter four of Creeping Compromise. It's going to take us two weeks to do it, tonight and next week, and then we will roll on. So let's begin. I need someone who is willing to read nice and clear for me. Who will be willing to read? If you have your books, we're on page 38, chapter four. Is someone willing to read tonight? I'll read. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Any discussion of dress today would be incomplete, some consideration being given to the topic of unisex. One of the phenomena, excuse me, one of the phenomena of our time is the mushrooming growth of lookalike boutiques and hair salons. Unisex shops and signs are appearing all across the country, offering, the exact, offering exactly the same clothes and hairdos to both men and women. What is the significance of this development? Are there any spiritual dangers inherited in this growing, growing trend? <laughs> Oh, first, we need to take note of the astronomical rise in homosexuality in the last few years. America has been literally swamped in a list of newspapers and magazine stories about the gay movement and how it has proudly come out of the closet to demand its rights. Gay marches and demonstrations attract great crowds and wide publicity. Television forums have openly discussed the matter before millions of viewers with both lesbians and homosexuals taking part. 
um, psychiatry has given formal recognition to the practice as normal sex behavior. Great Protestant church organizations are not only opening the doors to membership, but are ordaining self-professed homosexuals to the ministry. Churches have been established exclusively for the worship of homosexuals, and some marriages have been performed and publicly registered between two persons of the same sex. Hmm. All right, here's our first uh, time to have a discussion. And uh, what do you see and what have you seen? Uh, is this uh, what's going on in the world today when it comes to homosexuality? All right, anybody brave enough to start this out? Well, um, it is being constantly um, put before us and in the form of, of, of normal behavior. I mean, it is, it is, it used to be um, covert, but now it's very overt in that um, the commercials, the ads, the, of course we have the marches and the, you know, the censoring, if you say anything that potentially sound homophobic. And so, you know, the movement, like someone said, you know, the, he wrote this book um, in the 70s and here we are 2021 and we are in the thrust of what it is that was written back then so much so that it is even more prevalent and more um, um, apropos today than when he actually wrote it. And so, yeah, it's everywhere. You can't get around it. And how, you know, we know the rainbow represented the sign that God made, but now that rainbow has been, is being utilized to represent gay pride. And, you know, we got it in the schools and they can go and sit and drag and, you know, read stories to our children. And I just heard, and then I'm gonna be quiet, just heard on the Christian radio where, one, a teacher, I can't remember what state it, it, it is, but a teacher took her, her elementary class on a field trip to the gay bar. Mm. So yeah, this, this, so this is, this is very real and relevant in the times in which we're living right now. Wow. Thank you, Brother Parker. Oh, the hood said a lot of what I was going to say, but I, I saw that one too about the, uh, teacher taking the kids to a gay bar and the parents gave her permission mm. and that's mm. why this thing is the way it is is because the parents were mm. not being parents with their children but also it's a spirit that is going throughout the land you see more gay people now than ever before every age every race, every gender. Mm -hmm. And they have passed a law also in the state, I can't remember what state, but the birth certificate will not even have a gender on it. Mm -hmm. No gender at all. And I was uh, the same thing as Elder Hood said about the rainbow. They took God's covenant mm -hmm. to this world Mm, mm, mm. and changed it around mm. and this is the one one thing that you know that bothers me too is that they used the civil rights act to get the rights that they have mm -hmm. and they now have more rights than the ones that the civil rights state. law yeah. passed for <laughs> yeah. because if you say anything against them if you put your hands on them you're going to jail, mm. but they can say anything to us who are true men and women and nothing will happen to them because they do not want to be one to have to fight their cause. Mm. See, they have more power than those who the civil rights bill was written for. Mm -hmm. because they are afraid of them because mm -hmm. they have 
that kind in every facet of government and in life itself. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I'm going to try to save what I got to say for Sabbath because it's a part of my message. Go ahead, Brother Mike. Thank you, uh, Brother Parker. The only thing I can say about this whole thing is history is repeating itself. Yeah. Yeah. Straight yes, from indeed. the Bible. Yes, indeed. You know, taking that rainbow sign is a declaration of war. Remember, I said every battle is my God against your God. Anybody tell you any different, they just lying. Sister Veronica, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yes, Pastor. And I just want to say also with this homosexuality and this um, unisex, it's just forced upon us. You mm -hmm. know, it's forced upon us to, um, to, to come against our moral rights and belief. Because I remember when they were trying to make the bathrooms unisex. And mm -hmm. I'm like, no, this is crazy because I don't want to use a unisex bathroom. You know, I don't want to go there. You know, I think um, everybody should be separated. And um, they were trying to do that. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Oh, okay, you're finished? She said, hold on. You're done, Sister Veronica? I am so sorry. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. We're listening. Hello? Hello? Yes. Yes, we're listening. Yeah, yeah there was a call coming in from Jamaica. I'm so sorry. Well, I know so, you're uh, what I'm saying that it, yeah, it's you know, they're forcing these uh, their 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 beliefs on us and trying for us to like, you know give um come against our moral beliefs and, and and what we do believe and um i don't you know i don't like i don't like being put in that position because we have our rights you know um mm -hmm. whatever they want to do it's okay but when it comes to affecting us as christian and believe and that is a problem if you remember this um this couple um had a bakery and um, he didn't want to make mm -hmm. this cake and they sue that person because of his, his belief and they yeah. sue that person and you know, trying to take away our rights. So it's forced upon us and that is not good. That is not good. And um, that's where, you know, I draw the line. Yes, our freedom has a limit. Our freedom stop when it impends upon someone else's personal freedom. It's always been understood that way but in that cake issue, they weren't just trying to force it on. They wanted to take this man's business, take his livelihood. And that's just wrong. Sister uh, Regina, go ahead. Yes. Uh, first, I believe that uh, there has uh, not just been an astro astronomical rise in uh, homosexuality. I believe it's always been an astronomical rise in it. But today it's about exposure. And I have to admit myself, they have gone way too far. They have mm -hmm. gone out of the realms. I still see the covenant of Jesus when I see a rainbow. Amen. But we have to take responsibility for our own. I do. I have a little, uh, well, she's not little anymore, but I have a granddaughter. I do not want her using a unisex restroom or bathroom. I do not want her, anything forced on her where she's constantly bombarded with this type of thing. Now, who you are born to be, you are born to be. But to enforce, as Pastor Hood said, what you believe in your in your lifestyle or other folks, that's when it becomes a problem. And last but not least, this also tells me the power that be that's able to orchestrate mm -hmm. this, not only nationwide, but worldwide. Because mm -hmm. this has been going on since the Old Testament. Right. Uh, uh, so the the thing about what I see is power. It's not just a group of homosexuals that uh, has based war up against heterosexuals. Everything they're doing, they're making it a opposition to one another. But what mm -hmm. it is, is the power that be has always been that way. But now they can expose themselves and be the, the, the most of what they've already been. Yeah. 
Yeah, well said. Well said. Thank you, Elder Hood. Yeah, amen. Well said. And, and, you know, and we as a people have bought into it ourselves, not realizing, as it's been stated, that it's bigger than just, you know, what has always been. And yet we're taking on that character. And, you know, because who, who is the face or who had been the face for the, the bold makeup and the over the top eyelashes uh -oh. and the, you know, that is drag queen, the, the hair down to your butt, the, mm -hmm. you know, the weed that goes, the swishing and the swat, all those Ooh. are drag queen looks, you know, and mm -hmm. as much as I love heels, when you get to five and seven and six inch heels, all that is runway, you know, because they were the ones who do the runways and the, the walks and the, you know, the shows, the drag queen shows. And so what we're seeing is like they're talking about unisex. So it's hard to tell, you know, what one from one from from Don't one from it. the you other. Um, <laughs> yeah, because they're hiding amongst the women. Is yeah. what you're trying to say. Yeah, and, and even <laughs> some of the language, you know, and I have to be careful myself because, you know, I have nieces and I have younger relatives and, you know, even trying to minister to them and embrace them as they are, receive them, you know, have fellowship with them. You know, you got to be careful because you begin to, the Bible says, by beholding you become whatever you're beholden to. And I don't care who it is. That's a true statement, mm -hmm. whether it's a positive or negative. Like one of the um, deacons used to say, Pastor Hood, if you keep going to the barbershop, you keep hanging around the barbershop, sooner or later, you gonna get a haircut. And yes, it's just the nature of the beast. And, you know, they talk a certain that, yes. And I found myself, yes, you know, and that's I'm drag queen. That's, that's, that. mm -hmm. Yeah, and the mannerism because they overcompensate. And so now, you know, we're popping our fingers and rolling our necks and doing the clap. All that stuff did not originate with no one other than that community. And so, yes, even as believers, we've adopted those behaviors and characteristics not realizing that the end you know that the end goal is to you know pull us away from being that peculiar people where right. our defenses are low and we're insensitive to knowing that we are in a spiritual battle um so yeah yeah all right i love that okay uh is this sister veronica you back yes um okay. I just wanted to make a quick comment on about the rainbow, you know, how they trample, they use the rainbow and they trample up on it um, because that's God's covenant, you know. Mm -hmm. So anything that God put up, Satan always wants to tear it down. And the, as you said, the rainbow is a covenant. It's just like the Sabbath. The Sabbath is a covenant, you know, and the enemy come up against it, you know. Um, mm -hmm. tearing down the Sabbath, instituting this um, first day worship and all of that. So whenever God put up, a, you know, his covenant, the enemy is always go going to attack it. And you see that through the, you know, through this rainbow. And I just wanted to say again that, you know, these are the things that you are preaching about. The spirit, the manipulation, the enemy gets in their mind and tell them that, hey, you are not uh, born like this way. And this is not who you are. You feel like you're somebody different. That's a spirit of manipulation. And, um, you know, you can correct me, Pastor, if I'm wrong. But, you know, weakening their minds and, you know, I've been um, and just weakening their minds pastor and just telling them the wrong lies and they're believing it and then they're starting to act out that oh i don't think i should be this way i feel it in my spirit it's mm. just the wrong spirit that mm. is in the world because the bible said we are a generation of vipers and these mm. you know and they're they're populating the world they are i'm sorry um that's what oh, you good you good i don't need to say much tonight y'all got it i'm gonna take a few more and then we're gonna move on uh, Brother Parker, uh, go right ahead. Yes, I was uh, thinking about what uh, Sister Hood was saying about them being men acting like they're women. Mm -hmm. There were two cases where one was in, in the jail and another was in a restroom. 
at a restaurant or something. I can't remember exactly what the place was. But the man was pretending that he was a woman. And so he had on a women's dress and everything, went into the women's restroom and molested a young lady in the restroom. Mm. And they say that in the prisons now, when the men are put in the prisons, when they say they are women, that the uh, population in the prison is going up because women are getting pregnant. So yeah, you see, I heard these, that too. Yeah, these, <laughs> yeah I heard that. Yeah. These people are you taking advantage of what is happening? And I'm gonna say this and shut up. Now, they have their rights, the gay community. Now, the pedophiles and the rest of them, mm. they want their rights. Yeah, there's no end to it. There's no end to it because the devil is going to take as many people with him as he can. Mm -hmm. And people are buying into it. The judges, the the, the uh, governors and senators and all that stuff. They are buying into it because they are afraid of them, like I said earlier, because they have power. Mm -hmm. And the power they have is from Satan himself. He is the one that's putting the spirit of fear into the people who are not like them because right. they fear them and fear is nothing but a spirit from the enemy because god has not given us the spirit of fear mm -hmm. but of love of peace and of a sound mind we have to remember who our god is and mm -hmm. he is more powerful than their god amen amen all right real quick brother uh, mike go ahead you know <clears throat> talking about the unit like bathrooms you know that that was one of our wars but another war is the queen bible mm -hmm. they already written a bible for themselves mm. Mm. wow yeah i'm not i haven't looked into that but that is uh interesting uh, it's real yeah yeah it's a shame uh, thank you mike Sister Parker, mm -hmm. you change your mind? <laughs> no, no. I'm not. Oh. Bless him, Lord. Bless him. Yeah, it's just dust. Go ahead, Sister Parker. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have been put down in the basement. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you know, looking at, you know, and listening to what everybody's been saying, I was thinking about they just don't realize the devastation of their lifestyle yeah. and how uh, AIDS has become so rampant in this world because of them and how they just really don't care. But the thing is, they're going to have to pay for this sin. And you know, uh, you see them with this bun in the back of their head. I stopped wearing it. Hmm. Yeah, I stopped wearing it. Because hmm. if you stand a woman next to them and you really, they got the same mannerism, the same slenderness about themselves, you wouldn't know who was who. Well, you just wait the Sabbath. I'm going to wear that out, Sister Parker. Just wait the Sabbath. And, and I've been tonight. there. I'm going to do it. Yeah, I've been <laughs> there, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had a cousin. And I'm going to tell you, I had a cousin. He, he's gay. He's dead now. But we saw that he was gay. And so uh, my little boy, he wanted him to sleep with him. And so no, no, mm -mm, no, no, because right. they are very sneaky. They're, they're, you know what? They come Predator. as a friend. Yeah. They come as kindness. And children look for that, you know, some attention. And this is what they prey on, giving mm -hmm. them attention, giving them love, showing them that, you know, that, that someone cares about their their, their needs, their wants, and, and kids so into that. And that's what draws these kids to these people. Mm -hmm. They're very cunning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Look, I'll give y'all this one little, little uh, nugget. All those early zombie movies are about homosexuals. Once you get bit, then you go out and you got to bite somebody else. I'm going to leave it right there. Sister Regina, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I'd I just like to say uh, the Bible says raise up a child in the way uh, that he should go and he'll never part from it. That's why to this day when I see a uh, rainbow, I see a covenant. And also um, 
every homosexual is not a, a problem or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it, that's like every nationality. I mean, every homosexual is not a problem uh, because it's not being addressed in the proper manner. And first right. of all, homosexuality is not just all uh, in one box and cherry pick what you want to cherry pick from it and right. then uh, persecute. And uh, last but not least, I'd like to ask the question, who would pick a lifestyle that they know that they would be murdered? And so until, uh, if, if you're not walking in those shoes, you'll never fit. Oh, we're gonna get to we're gonna get to that part of it. I I, I wouldn't be uh, you. I'm glad you brought it up, but that would be irresponsible to uh, remember how I started the lesson tonight. It would be irresponsible to put everybody in one box, and certainly people of color understand that. We don't mm -hmm. like being all put in one box. It's like saying all black men are coming to rob you. You know that's silly. So. Um, Oh, I didn't want you to go away, Regina. I'm just having a dialogue with you. Uh, uh, that is, we get mad if we say all Black people are going to come in your store and steal, right? Uh, so we certainly ought to be sensitive to that kind of thought. Um, and so it does need to be clarified, but it's coming up if we can ever move off our first discussion. <laughs> you know, if we can get on to the next part of the reading, we'll get to that. Uh, because there's another faction in this situation that's feeding it, and that is hateful Christians. But we're going to get to that in our reading coming up shortly. You want to say you anything else, Regina? Clarity. Thank you for that clarity. Oh, yes. Thank you for bringing it up. Appreciate it. All right. Yeah, because two wrongs don't make a right, right? Okay. Uh, Sister Hood, you still with me? Yes, I'm here. All right, page 39, chapter four. Okay, much has been written about the possible causes for this spectacular escalation of a very a perversion, old oh, perversion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> very few seem to understand exactly why it, it has made such a sudden resurgence, but I believe we can discover the reasons by examining some parallel social developments, which have given explicit encouragement to the gay movement. There is a cause for every effect. And through the centuries of time, the same conditions have produced similar results. Uh, this back to Mike's comment, right? Is history repeating itself? I think Mike said that. That's basically what he just said. Go ahead. All Bible students are acquainted with the strong condemnation of sodomy, which is woven throughout both Old and New Testament. God labels it as one of the worst abomination, a sin which will utterly deprave and destroy. The ancient pagan world was riddled with the vice. The very name is derived from the city of Sodom, which harbored a host of militant homosexuals. Okay, we'll let that sink in for a second here. All right, the name uh, sodomy comes from a place that was completely out of control. It would have been the Vegas or the San Francisco, you know, of that of that time were very much predatory. Uh, and uh, and militant is probably not a strong enough word for what was going on there. And uh, it is uh, applicable today because before, while children are in the developmental stage, there are those who are fighting with everything they got for access to these children. That is not simply making a choice for yourself. That is making, that is holding society hostage. That's what that is. It would be just as wrong for sex education, for heterosexual sex to take place in the first and second grade. All of us would say that is ridiculous. Children should not be educated on uh, the reproduction and sexual intimacy at all in those early grades in school. That is, uh, however, as uh, somebody said earlier, 
we have gotten to the point now where people have positioned themselves in society where they can make rulings and force that on families who don't want any part of it. So then who really is the parent or steward of that child when the natural parents cannot make that decision? The, you know, if whoever's making the decision basically is the one with the power. And uh, again, as uh, it was said earlier, uh, people are kind of sitting on their hands because they don't want to be seen as the bad guy. So uh, uh, you can you continue, Sisterhood? I can't hear you. Okay. It says, Paul speaks in Romans 1, 26 and 27 of vile affections. For even their woven, even women. their women did change their natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust, one towards another, men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their era, which was meat. The, prob the, pro the reprobate mind which commits such things are worthy of death, Paul stated in verses 32. Okay, so uh, one big lie that's taking place now is people keep saying that the Bible doesn't condemn homosexuality. And then I heard Obama, which I know is going to make some of y'all mad. <laughs> I heard Obama making fun of it, saying, well, if you're going to use things in Leviticus, then you need to kill your kids when they're disobedient. You need to divorce your wife or burn in the toe. Some of y'all might have heard that clip. He was making fun of it as if it is a antediluvian, ignorant thought process uh, to have concerns about these things. But you see, this is Romans 1, 26 and 27, and it's explicitly clear. And see, when we go into the realm, and we've been talking about this in other studies, uh, such as the master class, that when you when you go into the air, you come out of the Holy Spirit and go into your feelings, you can justify anything. You know, uh, it's it's like a person with a mental illness, and I'm not saying this is a, an equivalent. Of course, a person with a mental illness think they're right. You know what I'm saying? So asking them is not going to prove anything. You ask them, well, uh, were you, have you been this way your entire life? Uh, do you think it's right? It's like asking a thief, can they keep your stuff? If somebody has a mental uh, disability, they're not capable of giving you a, a um uh, a logical response unless there is a universal standard that we're all going by. And for us as Christians, that universal standard is the word of God, and it is the decision maker, not my feelings. And then there is a natural issue here happening too, uh, especially when it comes to the men. Sin against the body, against your own body, has natural consequences and that those consequences tells you it's not good. Doesn't matter how I feel about it. What it does to destroy my body tells me that I shouldn't do it. Uh, I'm not taking hands right now. We're gonna, every time you see a picture, that's when we have the time where you can make your comments. I'm sorry about that. When you see the picture up, then you can comment. All right, Sister Hood, go ahead. All right, the, wait a minute, let me turn my phone. The land of Canaan, which the Israelites were to possess, was filled with the perverse iniquity of sodomy or homosexuality. This was one of the reasons God gave explicit instructions to them not to intermarry or in intermingle with the inhabitants of the land. They were to avoid any contaminating and any contaminating contact which could lead Israel to join their debased practices. 
Furthermore, they were given specific instructions against dressing in a way that could create the climate for committing this sin. The women shall not wear that which pertain unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God, Deuteronomy 22, 5. All right, now the hands can come up. <laughs> okay, sorry about that, but we'll never get through it if, uh, if we stop in between the readings. Okay, uh, I think that's Sister Veronica. Go ahead. It was Brother Parker first, Pastor. Oh, okay, all right, Brother Parker. Yes, while you was talking, it brought to my remembrance that a pastor, he was a, a black pastor, I can't remember his name, I wish I could. He asked a question of seven prominent ministers at these mega churches. Do you think that God allows homosexuality? It was T.D. Jakes. I know some people ain't gonna like that. It was, uh, no, it wasn't over Winfrey. It was a, a pastor. Uh, it was T.D. Jakes. It was uh, Joel Osteen and this dude from Saddle back and four or five more. Mm -hmm. And all of them had an excuse to justify homosexuality. One of them even had the nerve enough to say, when it's shown to me in the Bible, in the New Testament, where Jesus talked against homosexuality and said it was wrong, thou shalt not commit homosexual acts, then I'll believe it. Until then, it's love, love is love. Mm. And see, that's why their churches are full of them because they allow it and they get money from them. So well, I, all, uh, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were finished. Go ahead. It's all about money. That's what they want. And they want to be popular. So they are afraid to speak the truth. They have more concern for their popularity than they do for their soul. Because the Bible says anyone, any man that teaches them to do such a thing is condemned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and I do want to reiterate again that the issue here, uh, the, his example of Sodom was right on spot because these homosexuals were militant. And I, and I really want to make that distinction between those who are and those who aren't. Now, uh, all of it is wrong because it's sin against the body. However, there's a grave difference between uh, someone who is battling their flesh, uh, asking God to deliver them, versus someone who is uh, predatory. Those are, it's just like saying every heterosexual is a pedophile. You know, that is simply just not true. Um, so we want to definitely make that distinction, not because I'm afraid of somebody coming against us or anything, but because it's fair. You know, I, I'm, I'm sure that like some of you, I have uh, homosexuals in my family and, um, and uh, I have one, he's, he's dead, one of my uncles, um, he was predatory. But I also have other people in my family who, if they didn't tell you, you wouldn't know because they didn't wear their sexuality on their sleeves. They were just another member of the family. Um, so I just want to be fair about that. Uh, Sister Veronica, did you still want to make a comment? Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, while Sister Hood was reading, there's a couple of things that came to my mind. If we follow the pattern here, you know, when Lucifer was in heaven, he went to the angels and he lied, you know, about God. And he, he fell from heaven. So in the garden of Eden, he feed he with, with Eve with lies. He's the father of lies, of um, the father of lies. And now he is getting in the head of people 
you know, because if you don't possess the spirit of God, you're going to possess a different spirit. So you get into the minds and the head of people and tell them a lie about their body, you know, because the body, our body is the temple of the living God. It doesn't belong to us. It belongs to God. So there's a pattern. It's trying to let our mankind fall, you know, and he's continuing to do that. So um, there is just a pattern that we have to follow. And God, God is not that God love um, the person, but he does not love. He loves the person, the individual, but he does not love the sin. Because once there is life, there is hope for that homosexual person to come yeah. to Christ. As long yeah. as that person is lived, um, is alive, you know, they can come to God. I have a young man at my job who is a... Um, homosexual and i go to him every morning talk with him you know inviting him to church right. because i see that it's the spirit that need to be broken off of them so i keep ministering to him because you don't know when the lord you know will break that so we just have to love them you know and pray for them and and help them to um to to be delivered from those spirits yeah, yeah it's a, a deviancy just as I mean, the most comparable thing I could say is pornography. You know, it's another deviancy that need people need to be delivered from. But you can't be delivered if people are scared to tell you that it's wrong. And uh, and that's a, a, a very important thing that Brother uh, Parker brought up because I saw that thing too, where those preachers were asking, they got to tap dancing because they didn't want to lose their money. Uh, go ahead, Wasn't brother. that Larry, Larry King live? Uh, that was one. There were several. Uh, Larry King, also Oprah, and uh, then there was some other some other guy that was doing some kind of thing where he went to a lot of them. That's what Brother Parker was talking about. Uh, brother Mike, go ahead. You know, I was just thinking about uh, when I mentioned the, the Queen Bible. Mm -hmm. You know, back in the day, uh, I believe his name was Robert Baker. I read it this morning on our daily devotional mm -hmm. that he made him a little mistake reprinting the Bible, mm. which there, I guess there's still 11 of them out there where in a Le Leviticus where it's talking about uh, thou shalt not commit adultery. He left out the word not <laughs> oh boy <laughs> uh, you know the king basically wiped him out mm. and now the queen bible yeah and it's come not, a long way haven't we it, it's not <laughs> what <laughs> the bible's talking about <laughs> mm -hmm. exactly exactly uh sister hood go ahead We can't hear you. My hand isn't raised. Oh, you took it down. Sister Parker, go ahead. You know, I was listening to what everybody was saying. And um, I know a church today. And they're under the banner of holiness. Hmm. Mostly everybody in that church is a lesbian and a homosexual. Wow. From the pulpit to the ministry of music to the women's department. And it happened, it just, it just didn't get there. It's been that, like that for decades. Mm. And that spirit is deep seated within that church. Mm -hmm. And the lead uh, musical minister, he went to jail for molesting some young boys in the basement, but the church still went on as it is. And mm. he came back doing what he was doing. Mm. But the thing is, you look at you look at God and you say, Lord, how long are you gonna allow this to go on? Every time when you see them, they go on trips and stuff. They always have a bunch of kids with them, the women mm. and the men, the leaders. Mm. But the thing is, you ask God, you say, God, how long? And how many kids have they hurt, you know, with their foolishness? And the, even the pastor of the church knows what's going on within that church. It's been going on for decades, but they come up under the banner of holiness. And wow. that church, and to be honest, you have not really grown. Well, it's sick. 
and uh, so and, and so you understand my example of zombie movies. You know, uh, people aren't born a zombie. You got to get infected. <laughs> you know, and uh, but God can deliver. Thank you so much, Sister Hood. You know, from uh, <clears throat> just for. Um, in reference to the text, in, in context of the text we read, you know, um, I don't know if anyone would agree with me or not. However, you know, if we believe in, if I believe in generational curses. Yes. I believe when the Bible talks about sin goes three and four generations and that sin is progressive. I believe that. So yeah. when a person says, well, they're born like that, I personally believe that when the Bible says we have a propensity to lean towards a certain sin. Mm -hmm. And if my father or his daddy or his daddy daddy had those tendencies or they may have not been as pronounced. And if I believe the progression of sin and my parents weren't rooted in the word or maybe they were. It's the, 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 the nature of sin. I believe that a person can be born with a propensity to lean towards the same gender. And that's why I believe God in turn says we must be born again because he wanted to make sure that whether you were born, not born, whatever, the, whatever it may be, that he covered, that it encompasses everyone. And so in reference to the text though, what, what struck me, Pastor Hood, is when it says that, you know, they knew, they knew better and they're choosing it. And that reminds me of what is really, what is so, so bold today and, and out, in, out in your face is women in particular who, you know, have been in love with men, been married, you know, have children and grandchildren. And because the relationships or whatever didn't work with the male, they're flipping. So mm -hmm. now it's not a matter of, okay, well, I, I'm having an identity crisis. No, mm -hmm. it's I'm choosing to do something different because mm -hmm. it didn't work over here. Now, let me try this over here. So how, how, um, how often are we seeing what we're, what that text, I pulled that and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I see that in, um, you know, verses uh, Romans 1, 20, 26 or 27 or 32, just the, the, the um, in the, you know, in reference to those texts, how, yeah, so some, some people are just making a choice. I'm, I'm tired of men, I'm tired of being bothered with them. And so now I'm going to go with me, you know, I'm going to do the sisters. More women are readily available. Um, yeah. yeah. So I, I want to respond to the part about the uh, generational curses. Um, that is very much true. Uh, it, it certainly exists for brawlers, for thieves, for cussers, for you right. Know, it, it, it passes through the blood. It's called the poisonous tree. But the tendency uh, does not excuse the feeding of it. Right. Oh, you know, by we, no all, means. we all come out battle, battling something. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Know, it, and, and, and the environment that we're in either cultivates it or dissuades it. Uh, but, you know, can you be born leaning one way or the other? Well, that's uh, just a fact. You know, that's not even debatable, you know. So uh, anyway, I don't know if you were finished. I just went back to that text so you could have reference to it. But uh, uh, are you done? Yes. Okay. Uh, is that Sister Veronica? Yes, Pastor. I'll be quick. Um, you know, I just want to say, Pastor, you know, somebody mentioned earlier that train up a child. I think it was Sister Regina. Train up a child in the way they yeah. should grow. And when they become whole, they should not depart from it. But, Pastor, I tell you this. We have people in the Adventist faith who has grown in the church and know absolutely nothing out there but the Adventist message. And when yeah. our children leave and go to colleges, you get me? They yeah. go in with the wrong company, hooked up with the wrong people who mm -hmm. infiltrate their mind and manipulate them. And mm -hmm. then they go to that side. 
being end up in homosexuality and you know being bisexual and i know people for a fact that happened too so that's why we have to you know pray for our children uh, you know and just keep them prayed up especially when they go to colleges and go after the different high school and stuff like that because these spirits are all over ready to pray on our people well that's what's in front of you uh this these are um uh, gay puppets that are uh big in israel uh to the right there they're they're gay puppets and um there is a big hit and you know the strategy is not hidden uh, you know, I'll go more into that on Sabbath, but they have laid it out there. They said, we know that if we show it to you again and again and again, it will become normal. That is not someone making a choice for themselves. That is manipulation. And that's why the biggest battleground is not with the adults. It is with our children. Sister yeah, Regina. Pastor. Pastor, I just want to say, you know, these parents send their kids out to college and they come straight and good and they come back home being homosexual. And the poor it parents is. have to deal with that. And it may not even come home a Christian, right? <laughs> no. And even no. if you to a Christian school, they may not come home a Christian. No. <laughs> you know? My Lord. Sister Regina, go ahead. Yes, I don't feel homosexuality is infectious like a virus. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's something that you have to be, if I don't hear the word rape involved in it, then it was consensual. So that means you already had the tendencies. And, uh, uh, you know, it's up to you in the relationship and how much you of a relationship you have with God that determines how far you choose to go with it. Um, whatever changing that needs to be done, he'll do it. And, yeah. you know, but it is enticing and it's becoming just like these puppets that we're viewing, um, it's becoming more enticing. And like I said, I have a granddaughter that I do not want to be enticed that way. Whoever she's born to be, that's who she should be. But uh, as far as being enticed, I don't think our children should be exposed. We would, I was talking earlier with some friends about how it used to be when we were growing up, we weren't exposed to all this behavior. It's disrespectful. It's just as disrespectful as when I was in Rome and I got to go around the 16th, I was in the, in the Vatican in the 16th chapel where uh, Michelangelo actually uh, you know, with the with the paintings show little boys with men, you know. Yeah. So uh, we have to watch this thing from the whole global view, uh, a panoramic view and not just one sided. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Well, I have to respond to to that. Uh, the back during the time of remember those four great kingdoms, you went from Babylon to the Medes and the Persians to the Greeks and then to the Romans. Um, this was no, a normal part of Greek culture. When men went off to war, they would go off for years. And uh, it was all males and, 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 and in a large range in age. And they engaged in homosexual behavior with, with those young boys, those older men treated those young boys like their wives. Uh, this was a part of their culture, and then the Romans adopted that culture. Um, and uh, so I would agree with you if homosexuality was presented by God as just physical. That is not infectious, but God does not present it as just physical. He talks about a spirit that comes with sex that's different from other sins. And a... Uh, a, a spirit can be transferred and cultivated in a person um, if they have been groomed, whether they have homosexual tendencies or not. And uh, if we had time, we can go over some examples of that. But of course, we, as we always do, we didn't talk all the time up. <laughs> but that's a very interesting conversation. So, so Regina, um, you know, I hope that I'm, I'm being really clear about it. 
Uh, same thing. That's why I compared it to porn. Remember I used that comparison? Um, a heterosexual man uh, viewing porn again and again and again changes spiritually in the way that he views the opposite sex. Uh, that is not just a physical manifestation. That's a spiritual manifestation that one needs to be delivered from. And of course, women too, but you know, uh, by and large is promoted to, to, to men. Uh, so it, you, do you uh, have a comment about that or you, you want to leave that alone? <laughs> you know, y'all mean, I know me and Regina could talk all day, but I know that we're on a, uh, <laughs> doing a Bible study. So, but uh, we could talk about it later if you like, but. Yes, uh, I like to put it to rest and I want to hear you disturbing uh, the Sabbath and then take it from there. Maybe next time. Yeah, but, but, but any sex, homosexual or heterosexual, any kind of sex has a spiritual component to it is what is what I'm saying in the long and short. All right, I appreciate your understanding of that. Sister Hood, go ahead. Yeah, you know, and in, in, in reference to, I forget who said it, why this is something Sister Regina said in reference to, um, well, I, well, anyway, because, you know, I, the goal is now, to get them very young. Yes. Before they even realize the spirit, as you say, behind the temptation. And one of the most disturbing things that I saw was while working at a charter school and I had the kids out for recess and while they were playing in the yard, now I have third graders, you hear me? Which mm. means they're between the age of eight and nine. That was my class, I had third graders. And I watched, I stood and watched <clears throat> this little girl continually antagonize another little girl in reference to trying to, to just push herself on this little girl. And at first I said, am I seeing what I think I see? Because the, the, the one little girl, she had the mannerisms where, you know, a little more masculine to look and so forth. And the other little, little girl was very pretty and prim and what have you. And she was trying to get away. And the little girl just kept, you know, um, just grabbing her and pulling on her and trying to get her to submit to her aggression. Now, these are eight and nine-year-olds already in the thrust of trying to practice what's by some means, whether it's the television, the rap video, whatever. But nonetheless, that spirit at a very young age knows to try to impose it. And so, you know, I was taken aback. Of course, I intervened. And yet it, it, was, it was something to behold that they are already at that young age um interested in their sexuality to the point where um it is it, it's, it's you know i want to project whatever i'm going through onto another person of the same sex and the little girl was obviously you know like scared half to death but um i found that it's interesting and just speaks to the times in which we're living in all right all right sister parker you know, I was listening and I was thinking about the uh, Catholic Church, mm -hmm. how it's very prevalent in that in that denomination mm -hmm. and how they don't allow their priests to marry or their nuns to marry. And that brings on a problem because if some of them come in there with that spirit, they're going to try to appease themselves. And that's what's happening there. So many kids are being abused into yeah. the thousands and they really haven't said how many children have been abused in that uh, denomination but yeah. the thing is their laws i feel if they didn't have that law a lot of them wouldn't go over yeah those are that. pagan practices 
Yeah. You know, that those are not even Christian practices. God said, be fruitful and multiply. And multiply. <laughs> That's what the, yeah, a man that finds a wife is a good, uh, a, a bishop should be the husband of one wife. See, that none of that stuff is biblical, and that's why they have sinful results. That, that's what I'm saying. But the thing is, if they had allowed that to happen, a man with a woman and a woman with a man, but mm -hmm. their actions, their pagan actions, as you have said, mm -hmm. has brought it to where it is. And a lot of kids are suffering because of that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah. why I believe the Lord is really go soon to become. Well, because see, these are children and these children, like Sister Hood said, they go back and antagonize other children. And it's yeah. just a, 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 a evolving spirit. Yeah, a cycle of abuse. Uh, but you see why I said we weren't going to be able to finish this tonight. We're going to have to continue it on next week. Go ahead, Brother Parker. Yes, sir. Three things, and I'll keep it short. Mm -hmm. Number one, Sistine Chapel, Michelangelo. I don't know if anybody know it, and they probably do, but Michelangelo was gay. Mm -hmm. And that was his gay mm -hmm. lover whom he painted the picture of Christ on the cross of. Mm -hmm. Number two, the, the term that we use today, mentor, mm -hmm. came from the Roman, and it meant originally tormentor mm. they tormented those young boys and that's where we get our term mentor from and that's why you see a lot of people that have mentors are tormenting those whom they're supposed to be mentoring and number three we have to remember that as you've already said is nothing but a spirit and we're talking about homosexuality but that spirit goes everywhere. Mm -hmm. It goes deeper than just homosexuality. If you, if your, and I hate you say it like this, but if your father was a whoremonger or your mother was a run around her, mm -hmm. that spirit mm -hmm. is also in you. And you are the one who have to break the cycle by renouncing that spirit, that generational curse. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Brother Parker. Uh, uh, Sister Veronica, go ahead. Yes, Pastor. So I know a young lady. She went to prison um, in her teenager. And uh, when she went to prison and served her time there, it was forced upon her, you know, um, the bisexual was forced upon her. And then she came out of prison and that spirit still followed her. She never went in there. She told me she never went in there with that, but it was forced upon her. And when she came out of prison, she still kept, she carried that spirit with her. So I'm just saying, so some cases it's forced upon you. You weren't born like that, you know, depending on the circumstances. But once that spirit get into you, it's hard to break. And I've been working with that person, trying to get that person in church so that that spirit, they can, you know, leave that spirit alone. But, um, you know, I, I just want to share that. And one more thing, you know, when you were talking about Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, Vegas, they always say Vegas is the sin city. I remember one time my, my family was going there, my sisters, and they were having a party there and everybody was going to Sin City. And I said to myself, why would I want to be in Sin City? You know, I don't want, that's the name alone, Sin City. <laughs> I don't want to be a part of that. Yeah, something might go do. wrong. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Yeah, something yeah, might go wrong. I don't want to be a part of that. If I'm going to Sin City, I'm going to pack a suitcase full of tracks and book and go <laughs> walk up and down the strips. And that what I was going, if I go, that's what I would be doing. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Hood. You know, back in 19, uh, when did we leave Cleveland? Well, hesitating right? like somebody who getting old. You said back, uh, back in, I think it was 99. <laughs> back in, in 1999, I had an opportunity to have a full ride for my master's program in early child education because my supervisor really liked it, not liked it, mercy. She really liked my work work ethic. 
And so she set me up where I could have been very successful in the field of early education. And she took me under her wing. She, you know, um, wherever she went, as far as when she was promoted, she took me with her and she set me up for success. And I went through the process of, you know, I would get a full, a free ride for my program. And when I went to see my counselor, the thing that I would had that I would have to do was my internship. And part of my internship was, um, you know, you develop the dynamics of a family because early childhood, they're very pictorial in learning. So everything is, you know, through art or some form of play or some type of visual aid to assist in educating. And the thing that that stopped me or hindered me was even back then, I'm talking about 1999, one of the prerequisites is when you do your interim, you had to present your modules and how you teach. And it had to be from the perspective of the, the, the dynamics of a family. So you had to be willing to teach mother, father, children, father, father, mother, mother, you know, in that along those grids. And if not, then you could not become certified here in the state of Ohio. And this was at Cleveland State University back in 1999. And so I don't know what it's like today, but yeah, so even back then, and we're in 2021, even back then, um, it was being, you know, made known that you know, that there was an agenda. And if you didn't follow it, then you would not be able to, to do or, or move in certain realms that you, you know, we were able to do otherwise. So, so, yeah. Mm. All right. After, all right. I remember that. Uh, yes, after, go ahead. Um, I usually look at the news when I'm on my computer and uh, was it last week? I think it was, I saw an article. I can't remember what state it was. But in this particular school system, um, had the kindergartners learning about uh, becoming transgender and that sort of thing in kindergarten. Mm. They were starting out teaching them about it. So they're not waiting anymore. They're starting with our five-year-olds. Well, those are developmental years, you know. And uh, so... In anything else, Sister Battle, we're we're told that a child has to be mature enough to make a decision. That's why you can't get a driver's license until 16. You know, you, you go to the military at 18. You can't drink until you're 21. But you can make sexual decisions at five. Yeah, the, you can you can learn how to be transgender if you want to. If you're a little girl and you want to be a boy, that's okay. If you're a little boy and you want to be a girl, that's okay. Hmm. Yeah, well, well, I'm going to have to start shutting it down now. I appreciate all the comments. Uh, I just want to close with this last part of this. This strategy of, of um, the biggest spirit of all is the one of chaos. You know, it's embodied by, you know, characters like the Joker, or you know things like that, where there's no rhyme or reason to it, but there is a rhyme or reason. Uh, just like the far left is always incensed and ready to kill the far right and vice versa, those things are not happening by uh, organically. They are being cultivated because it's a means into the end, to an end. It's called the Hegelian dialectic, problem, reaction, solution. You're presented with a problem. People overreact to it. Oh, you need to shut them all down. And then we figure when calmer heads prevail, well, we can't do that. So let's meet them somewhere in the middle. Well, that was the goal in the first place. You would not move at all if it wasn't for the extreme on the other end. You know, if it was just calmer heads discussing it, you would not give an inch. But when they have the polar opposite acting the plum fool, then it causes you to soften on what you didn't, didn't entertain to begin with. Problem, reaction, solution. Let me give you an example of it. 
if you go, you know, I know you good Christians don't go to the movies, but when you used to, you know, you have a, a, um, a small drink for $3, you know, then you have a, 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 a medium sized drink for $5, or you can get a super sized one for $6. You see, at least I ain't paying no $3 for that little bitty drink. And then if I'm going to get the middle one for $5, I might as well get the one for $6. Well, that's what they wanted you to do to begin with. They don't care if they don't sell one small drink. <laughs> it's, it's a form of manipulation called the Hegelian dialectic. And this is what happens when these organizations um, send people to infiltrate uh, groups like this on the right. You're looking at it in the picture in front of you. You have one group with a straw man argument, stop using religion to justify hate. Right. And you go, well, wait a minute. I'm a Christian and I, you know, I'm not saying I hate anybody. I'm saying, you know, don't force this on me. Right. Uh, now, then you got the other group that says, I'm a Christian and God hates your feelings. Well, wait a minute. A Christian looks at that and says, wait a minute. God loves everybody, no matter what they're into. And he does. So that guy is not acceptable either. You see that. So these groups are created uh, to get you to move to the middle, and the middle is normally indifference. You know, uh, uh, I say Henry Kissinger said, Americans will accept anything if you give it to them slow enough. Now, that's a powerful statement. <laughs> if you just throw them, throw it on them, they'll reject it. But if you give it to them slow enough, Americans will accept anything. Yeah, that would probably be true. Well, I'm cl closing now. Let me let me finish this, and then I'll let you make your comment. But this is um, we really have to be sober. Isn't that what the Bible tells us? To be sober, we are to be diligent for our adversary. Is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And so what I'm trying to tell you is that somebody's always trying to provoke your feelings one way or another. So more, now more than ever, we ought to be rooted and grounded in the word of God. And what does the word of God say? That everyone is a candidate for the kingdom. I've been asked many times, would you accept homosexuals in your church? And the answer has been yes, every single time. You know why? Because you can't hear the gospel if you're not allowed to go where the gospel is preached. Right? Sin is sin. But what overcomes sin is perfect love. You know, I am supposed to share the truth, but there's no hate in that is simply making people's choices clear. That's all we're doing. That's all we're supposed to be doing. If hate is involved in it, then God is not in it. You know, God hates sin, not the sinner. And some of us may not like that, but we're supposed to be trying to be like Christ. Christ left that pulpit after he announced his calling, rolled up that scroll, and he went out amongst the people and didn't come back until he was tried the night before he was crucified. He went to he went he worshiped went to church every Sabbath, but as far as trying to spend all his time in the church house trying to convince them that we need to be out there with the people, he didn't do that. He just went out there with the people, no matter what their issues were. And while we ought to have some righteous indignation about being under attack and being misrepresented on this left picture, we certainly can become the non-Christian evil person on the right picture which says, God hates your feelings. That's not us either. We're supposed to be salt and light. And both of those things have hope in it. If we don't present the gospel with hope, then we're no better than the people on the left. All right. I want to thank y'all for uh, staying tonight.
Uh, as long as it don't mess up what I just said, you're more than welcome to say something because I thought it was a perfect ending. <laughs> All right, we're going to. Well, I did. I don't know if my hand goes up when I take my mic off or not, but it did. But I just want to say one thing. I don't care where I used to work, I used to always invite people to church. I used to love doing that when I was uh, younger. Amen. And as a nurse, years ago, nursing wasn't paying what it was paying then. And a, there was several, well, anyway, there wasn't that many men in nursing, mm. but a large percentage of them were gay, okay? Right. And one Sabbath, we had visitors day and I invited this guy I knew was homosexual to be for visitors day. And he came, he, he came to church, he sat with me. My daughter was a little baby then and he picked her up and put her on, you know, his lap. And later on, two of the members said something to me. Uh, one said, oh, you could tell he got that fatherly touch. And later on, this other guy said something to me about where is your husband? Anyway, I, I got, I was laughing, so I couldn't stop laughing. I told this guy, they're saying that my husband don't come to church. These people don't know who my husband is. The very next year when I was at camp meeting, it was on the front of the plane dealer this guy was with a bunch of other homosexuals like him. He got killed. They, mm -hmm. they had to shut down Lakeside's uh, 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 emergency room because of the way they were carrying on. And the people at work was telling me about it. And I was so glad. I didn't let people tell me to do that. He's the second. I've taken two guys to church who I knew was homosexuals. I believe that God loves the homosexual, but he just don't like the activity. And I think that Satan is doing this to hurt God, because like we said last night, man and woman was made in the image of God and Satan is trying to hurt him. I mean, I have a lot of different things like that, but I'm just gonna say, I'm glad I brought that man to church that day, a year later, he was dead. Okay, yeah. so um, no, we shouldn't see anybody as not a child of God. Amen. I'm glad you brought him to church too. And, uh, you know, we, you know, it's evidence when we are um, just really nasty about stuff um, that we need to work on our relationship with God. You know, unless we're under outright attack you know, uh, then you have to take a different posture, but why would somebody want to join something so mean and hateful? You know, we really need to think about that. Sometimes we get in the way, and as you, you, you mentioned about what Satan's motives are, you're actually, actually absolutely right. That's why we're so divided. That's his job, to divide and conquer. That's why we have black against white, rich against poor, uh, red against blue, and straight against gay and any other any other way we can be divided satan is going to try to do that and but god is good and that's why we come together and have these conversations and that's why i wasn't afraid to mention that i have people in my family uh I, we try to get along well um uh, we uh pray for them but and when we do that let's not forget that there are things in our lives in our hearts that God hates just as much as he hates homosexuality. And we need to make sure that we release those things to the Lord uh, as well. So we'll, we'll continue yeah. this on next week. Uh, did you say something, uh, Sister Hood? No, I was just concurring. Amen. Yeah, so we can get uh, deceived, self-deceived, get on our high horse and say, well, I might be bad, but at least I don't do that. Well, all of it will keep you out of heaven if it's not confessed uh, and released unto God. All right. Thank you all so much. I hope that someone will get some benefit out of this. I always appreciate everybody contributing and commenting. 
We're looking forward to Friday night. If you're on the nominating committee, you'll be getting something from me uh, tonight and how to connect with us on tomorrow night. Keep that in prayer. We start tomorrow night at seven. All right, let's pray. Lord, thank you for our time together tonight. We ask that you continue to minister to us and teach us how to minister to others. Lord, help us to love what you love and hate what you hate and become more like you, where when we witness people don't see us, they see you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor, can I just make a